Okay, we're in section 5.4 still. We're looking at random variables. So from past experience, a car salesman knows the number of cars she sells per week is a random variable. Basically, it's based on chance. And this is the distribution. So y is my variable. That's the number of cars. And remember, p is probability. So the probability has already been calculated here. It's not frequency. So the chance of selling zero cars is 0.135 or 13.5%. So let's practice that random variable notation. So what's the probability that the salesperson sells exactly three cars? Um, the event of selling three cars, our variable is y here, so y equals three. Um, how about at least? At least is where a lot of students struggle. At least means three or more. So that would be greater than or equal to three. Fewer means less than. So less than seven, fewer than seven cars. And then at least three means three is my bare minimum. So we do an or equal sign because we're including three, but less than seven. So in between. And we're using y because my variable is y. So let's go ahead and use the addition property. Remember, we can add events if we're doing like an or to find each of the following. So I'm going to um, put the chart down here just so we can still see it. Um, so the probability of three selling three cars, that's straight from the table. It's just 0 0.180. At least three cars, this is the addition property. It means probability of three or four or five or six or seven or eight. So we're basically going to add anything that's three or more. So we're going to go ahead and add those all up. So you can immediately type them. If you want to write it out, I'm going to write out all the probabilities. Just so when you look back, you remember what we added. But at least means three or more. So I'm adding the probabilities of three or more. So 0 0.180, 0 0.090, plus 036, plus 012. Oops, I missed a number at the end. There we go. Three, two, three. So the chance of selling at least three cars would be, this isn't asking for the sentence, but I'm helping us understand it, right? 32.3% chance of selling at least three cars. It's good to make sure we understand what all this means. So less than seven basically means anything less than seven. So zero through uh, six. Oops, five and six. So we have two options here. So it could be zero through six, seven's not included. Um, what I find faster would probably be to do 1 minus 7 and 8, but again, that's up to you. So do what makes sense to you. I'm going to do 1 minus probability of 7 and 1 minus probability of 8. You will get the same answer either way. And so there's often more than one way. Just do what makes sense to you, and we get 995. All right, and then between three and seven, um, what this is saying is include three, but don't include seven. That's what that little symbol means. So three to six. So that little symbol means include the three. So five plus six. So we'll do, we'll just add those up. 0 0.18 plus 0 0.09 plus 0 0.036 plus 0 0.0112, 318. So that's um, random variable notation and finding some probabilities. Um, let's look at the mean and standard deviation. So the mean, remember mu, 
is we sum of the x's divided by the total, um, and then we're going to multiply by frequency if things have frequency. So I'm going to kind of factor out f over n. f over n is the same as probability. Um, so actually the formula for the mean is just the sum of the x's times their probability. Um, we also sometimes call this the expected value. And we'll talk about that more. Um, so when we find these probabilities, we actually don't have to divide because the probability has already kind of done that division step. Right, normally we divide by a total when we find average, but probabilities have already divided. So all we're going to do is we're going to find x, p of x. So that we're going to multiply x and p of x, and then what we're going to do is find the sum. And so we'll do that in this example. We're looking at the number of goals. Oops, the number of goals. That's my x value. Scored by a losing team in the NHL, so that's hockey. Um, so how many goals do losing teams tend to make? And then we have the probability. So 17% of the time, they the losing team makes zero goals. 40% of the time, the losing team makes one goal, and so on. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to create a new column called x p of x to find the average. So zero times 0 0.1702, oh, we get zero. I already did the first two rows for you. Three times 0.3191. Just multiplying these two numbers. And we get 0.6382. So we're basically multiplying the data by the frequency and dividing by the total all in one step, because probability's kind of done that for us already. And then the final row, we get 0213, those two. We get 0 0.0852. And then we add them up, right, to find an average. We find a total. And we don't have to divide, again, because probability has already done the division for us. So it's a little bit different than the average we're used to. And we get 1383. That is actually our average. So what does that mean? So again, I did not divide because division has already happened in the probability row. Um, so what this means is it's what happens if we watch lots and lots and lots of hockey games. So after um, randomly selecting, remember everything's random, many hockey games, NHL games, um, the point is, is anything can happen in one game, but if we watch lots of games, we would expect the mean or the average goals by the losing team selected to be about one point. 383, three. right? This is on average. So they're either going to score one goal or two goals or zero goals, right? But on average, it'll be 1.383, right? No single game will be 1.383. So the interpretation of the mean of a random variable is just the expected mean or average after a large number of trials. So it's, again, just what happens after watching many, many, many times. Um, standard deviation has a very, very ugly formula. Um, so like, why waste our time? Let's go ahead and use the calculator. So I'm going to just go back up here and put the x's and the p of x's in the calculator. Did we make it to 4? Yeah. So I'm going to put the x's in L1. And the probabilities in L2. Cool. There we go. So you can see, um, we're going to put the x's in L1, the variable in L1, and the probabilities in L2. And then we're just going to do one bar stat like we've been doing in the past. Just make sure you tell the calculator to look at both lists. If you don't tell it to look at L1, it won't. So if you're using the other version, L2 are frequencies. 
So probability is like a weird version of frequency. And notice x bar matches what we got, 1.383. And my standard deviation, or sigma, for probabilities we'll use sigma, is 0.93526. All right, and then how do we decide unusual or not? So we may or may not remember, but unusual was z-score. So we're going to do the data value minus the mean over standard deviation. So four goals minus that 1.383 all over the standard deviation. So four minus 1.383, enter, and then divide. Nine, three, five, two, six. 2798. Is this unusual? Yeah, because it's more than two standard deviations from the mean. All right, let's just finish up this page and then I'll meet you back in the next video. So do we remember expected range? Also been a while. Um, so we're adding some new vocab and some new stuff, but we're kind of all doing the same thing we've been doing. So expected range was that mean plus or minus two standard deviations, right? Remember, most of the data is within two. It's coming from the same idea that that was our cutoff for unusual. So we'll do 1.383 plus or minus two times that standard deviation. So I get 1.383 plus or minus 1.87052. And then I like to do subtraction first. And then add. So we get negative 0.48752 up to 3.25352. And I'm going to get rid of the calculator now. So we're talking about hockey goals. So goals have to be whole numbers, right? It's discrete, so we need to round within. So anywhere from zero, right? So negative 0.48, zero would be within. 3.25, three would be within. So anywhere from zero to three goals. So the interpretation of sigma, um, remember it measures the standard deviation of x values. And all of this has to do um, after a large number of trials. So anything can happen one time, right? The idea is this is what happens in the long run. And so the main thing we use it for is with the mean. Let's do Z, the way I worded this, with z-score and mean to assess whether a given value of the variable is unusual or not. So that's really, we're not going to use standard deviation on its own, but we'll use it to basically decide unusual and expected range. So in the long run, most losing teams will be zero to three goals, right? But anything can happen in a single game. So that's what I mean by a large number of trials. All right, let me know if you have questions.